Welcome back to another episode of Cracklin Rosie True Crime. The DA tape that we will listen to together and analyze tonight is the interview with ADA Lifer and Leonard Dapolito. Leonard was a friend of David Berkowitz. They met at Christopher Columbus High School and they remained friends up until the time shortly after David Berkowitz's return from the military. Let's get started with the tape. I were the office of the district attorney in Queens County, president of myself, assistant district attorney Herbert Leifer, and Leonard Dapolito, D A P O L I T O. All right, Leonard, you want to basically tell us what you do. This is with regard to an investigation involving David Berkowitz, who I understand uh, you have known for a number of years. Okay. Uh, first of all, tell us uh, where are you employed at the present time? Okay, I'm employed in Patson Incorporated in Mount Vernon. I drive a truck there. I also work part time up in Rockland County. I investigate cases of child abuse. Okay. Uh, and when you say you work part time on child abuse cases, uh, it, it's a regular job, but it's only part time. It's part time. It's volunteer work for now. Hopefully, it'll go pay as soon as we get some money up there. It's a private organization. I want to say peace officer. Though. All right, what organization is that? The Rockland County Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Okay. Uh, also present at this time is Detective George Bird. Want to give you a voice, George? Yeah, uh, Detective George Bird, shield number 901. Uh, Leonard, would you tell us when you first met David Berkowitz? Mm, that was back in 69, I met him at Christopher Columbus High School. And can you tell us from that time on the type of relationship you had with David? what you've known him to do, what you've known him about him. Fairly close. Uh, up until, I'd say, 70, 71, he went into the Army. And basically, from that point on, he sort of drifted apart. All right, so let's go back to Christopher Columbus High School. So... Lenny says that they met in 69, so Berkowitz would have been about 16, right? He was born in 53. So he and Berkowitz met in 69. He would have been about 16, going on 17. And then he enlisted in the Army in 71, so... He says they were fairly close, and there's a lot of information about his friend Lenny, but it sounds like they really only knew each other for a few years. Um, well, we'll stop there and just keep going. Just, just pointing that out, that people think childhood friend, and maybe they think a longer period of, of time, but uh, 69 to 71, which is what he's saying. I think that they stayed in contact a little bit longer and closer to the crimes. But uh, anyway, let's listen to it from, from Lenny's perspective. What you knew about him then, what kind of guy he was, what kind of friends he had, so on? Well, he wanted to be a fireman. That was the basic thing about him. Uh, most of the people who he hung out with or associated with were either going to be firemen or police officers. Those are most of the people he knew. Uh, pretty conservative people. He was very conservative. In fact, I called him white right wing more than anything else. Wow. All right. Uh, when you knew him in high school, did he? Remember when we covered in the military video, Lenny's saying that they knew him as right wing. That's what they would call him. But then he had a lot of changes in the military. He became anti-war, anti-gun, which is crazy. And uh, he kind of flips sides. And we see this with Berkowitz with almost everything. He will obsess in one direction and then flip and obsess in the other direction, the way he did with Christianity and uh, Satanism. I mean, he goes from one side of the coin to the other and he goes full force and obsesses with it. So just a quick note there. We'll carry on. Uh, hang out with the guys? Did he drink? Did he date? Yeah, he dated. Uh, he wasn't much of a drinker. Uh, 
that point, not many of us weren't, we weren't really drinkers. Uh, yeah, he dated occasionally, no more, no less than anybody else. Did you have a double date with him? Uh, I tried to set him up once with my fiance's friend, but uh, it didn't work out. How long ago was that? Oh, jeez. I really couldn't tell you. That was quite a while ago. All right. Now, you first met him in uh, Christopher Columbus High School. When yeah. was that? When was that? I would say that was 69. 69? Yeah. All right. And just tell us, what kind of guy was he? Quiet guy, he was a nice guy, I liked him. Everybody liked him. He was just very quiet, he kept himself quite well. Um. This is what you hear from all of his friends that you've had an opportunity to hear from. Nice guy, kept to himself, so pretty consistent. Have any problems in school that you know of? No, he's a fairly good student. Now, when he left high school, went right into the army. Right into the army. Now, how I didn't about, even attend his graduation. Now, did you know him when he, you knew him when he was an auxiliary police officer in the 4 5? Yeah. Were you an auxiliary at all? Yeah, I was in a 5 2 at a different time, though. When were you in the 5 2? Uh, when I went in? Yeah. Uh, that was probably in 71 or 70. Did you know a guy there named Donaldson? The name's familiar. I really didn't know him, though. I knew the name. Did you take any training with uh, with David? No. In the, in the year? No, he's been different times. So you can see here, they're still doing a little diggy dig with Oshansi. Did you join the jury because you knew David was in it? No, more because of another friend I went to. We all went together. What were their names? John Camparetto and Snedeka. Yeah. Comporeto. After David went went into the army, did you hear from him? Did he correspond with you? Occasionally. Uh, I'm not much on writing. He wrote letters every now and then. My mother corresponded with him to some degree. And what kind of stuff did he say in his letters? Basically, for the most part, they were uh, fairly everyday letters. Every now and then you get one that was a little on a psycho side. Well, what do you mean by that? Uh... There was one he signed, Master of Reality, where he just sort of rambled on and on. This was addressed to my mother at the time. Uh, the phrases I couldn't even recollect right now. But he just rambled on. Just a quick note. You know, this crime was so sensationalized, and it's because it was horrific. Um, there were normal letters in there. Remember that once uh, the press was hot on this, People, you know, the letters that were turning up were all the crazy letters, but you even heard it there. A lot of them are just regular letters, and I'm sure, let's jump back also. I know this has nothing to do with Lenny, but we talked about letters from David to Iris when he was in the military. Well, just a few came up, and those were the more crazy ones. I'd love to see some of just the regular letters, so just keep that in the back of your mind. I'm by no means saying that Berkowitz wasn't crazy, but there was some normalcy there too. It's just all of the crazy stuff is what has been sensationalized. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah. Now, uh, when he got out of the army, did he get back in touch with him? Yeah. And uh, where was he living at the time? The time was still living with his folks. He was living in Park City. By the way, did. Did you live in Co-op City, too? No, I did not. You want to uh, stop the tape, and we got Mike and Sam coming in, so we can all sit down together. The time is now 6.45. The tape has been off a few minutes. Uh, Detective Langone and it's Assistant D.A. Amiento. 7.45. 6.45. Detective Amiento. Just another quick note. He did say that they were acquainted until about 71, but Berkowitz got out of the army in June of 74, and then he says that he did have contact with him, so, um, you know, th there was contact. Mianto, uh just came in. Uh, Detective Langone, you want to give your name for identification purposes? Mm -hmm. Yes, Detective Langone, Queens DA's office. Mm -hmm.
Michael Armiette, the Homicide Investigations Group. Okay. All right, now we're continuing with regard to uh, when David got out of the service. He got back in touch with you, right? Yeah. And uh, did you get together at all? Uh, on rare occasions we got together. There were far and few between. Had he changed much since he got out from the time you knew him before you went into the service? He changed while he was in the Army, which we could see through the letters. He had went from a, from a like I told you before, he's very ultra-conservative, right-wing type of guy. And uh, he sort of went very left, which we got through the letters how he was feeling about it. He was very bitter against the Army. Any reason why? Nothing really put your hand on him. He, he, he asked to be sent to Korea. That was his choice. Uh, in Korea, he was very upset over the racial problems that were going on there. Uh, I believe he got into drugs and when I was in Korea. But, uh, like I said, the, the correspondence were far few between. And, and one minute, it'd be a, your typical sort of a letter, you know, hello, how are you, sort of a deal, to a total letter just rambled on. You couldn't make sense out of one, one into the other. When he got back out of the service, did you double date together? Well, that's the time I set him up. Uh -huh. I tried to set him up. We had met in a bar. I wouldn't actually call it a date. Uh, me, my fiance, and one of her friends, and he had met us there, but they didn't get along. And that was the last time I tried. What kind of car was David driving? He was driving a Ford, uh, a yellow Ford. During the period of time that you know him, did you know what in any other kind of cars that he had? No, I believe, I believe that was his first and only car that I know of. Because he didn't drive before he went to the Army. He got his license after the Army, and that's when he got the car. Uh, did you ever visit his apartment? Uh, the only time I was apartment was when I moved him into Pelham Parkway. That's the only time I went to the apartment. The day I moved him. He moved to Nurshell after that, and then he moved into Yonkers, and I wasn't in either of those apartments. Though I wasn't invited once. Where did he invite you to New Rochelle or Yonkers? Yonkers apartment. Because I drive a truck to that area. He said, if you're ever in the area, give me a phone call, stop by. But I just never did. Did you ever speak to him while he was in the New Rochelle apartment? Uh, no. In fact, he was in and out of New Rochelle before I even knew it. What about when he was in Pine Street? Uh, that's when I found out he had moved. Did you speak to him while he was living there? Uh, yeah. He invited me over there once. Yeah, I think he, he just moved. Him? He had told me he just moved. He gave me his phone number at the time when he had moved. Uh, he invited me and never went there. Never got there. When was that? Mm, I really don't remember the dates. The rest of two years ago, maybe it was three. Was that the last time you spoke to him? Uh, he came over my house once. Um, no, that must have been before that, because he was working for a construction company at the time. When he went to the post office, I don't think I'd seen him since he went to the post office. Because last time I remember really talking to him, he was still working for, uh, I believe it was Wolf and Lear. He's working. So if you listen to him carefully, initially it was really they lost contact in 71. And I get, I really believe that, um, for the most part, you can hear the answers that Lenny's giving. I mean, he sounds pretty sincere, but initially they kind of dropped contact in 71. Now he's putting himself to 75, right? He said, this is two years after Berkowitz's arrest. And then he's saying, what, he got arrested two years ago, so maybe a year before that. So now he's uh, moving himself into the picture more around seven, 76, so anyhow. I don't think that he's being dishonest. I actually think that Leonard is being genuine. I think that if I were a friend of Berkowitz, I would probably want to cut my association off with him to law enforcement, to media and all that earlier too. But um, I think that they may have been in contact a little longer than he's wanting to say. But I don't think that he's being dishonest. I mean, he sounds like he was a good friend. If you remember from the tape that we listened to on Nat Berkowitz, he was one of David's friends, Leonard was, that, that Nat likes. So he sounds like he was, he, he was a nice kid. So anyhow, just throwing that out there. Working up the technical job up off uh, Ross Westchester Express flight. The last time I really talked to him. What, what did he have to say at that time? Uh, he told me he was, in, he was working a construction job, which I thought was a great job, and he wasn't too happy with it, and he was looking to go elsewhere. And I don't know, I don't remember if he mentioned the post office or not. Do you know what he was involved with, or was he religious at this time? 
Now, he might be late to was in Korea. In fact, he had signed me and my family up for a newsletter called the, uh, the Sword of the Lord, which came from the South somewhere. And it, this correspond I mean, it just kept coming. The thing wouldn't die. I mean, he kept, for, for, for like four years, his paper came. I don't know if he kept paying for subscriptions, or they just kept sending it to us. But it was more or less like a, something a reverend would get. You know, it is. And his dad said the same thing. I don't know if it was the same, the Sword of the Lord, but he said the same thing, that he was starting to get stuff in the mail and he would just throw it away. Uh, the Sword of the Lord was mentioned, too, in the um, letters that he received from the Baptist pastor. If you haven't seen the military video, I did make it prior to this data dump. Now, in hindsight, I wish I had some of this information that if I, I could have included in there. But uh, there is consistency throughout his acquaintances, so... Okay. I'll be quiet. About how to talk to your congregation, or, you know, buy this kit, and it'll help you out, so on and so forth. But he had one very religious boy, he was in the army. He became one of those born-again Christians or something like that. Um, in fact, he was were annoying you, at the time. Were you in touch with him when he first came out of service? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It might have been. He might have, he might have right. walled up. Did he do any traveling that you know of? No, not that I know. After the army, I'm talking about. Yeah, like uh, right after the army. Not that I know of. You didn't go uh, cross country? Who? David? If, if he did, I didn't know it. No, you didn't know him. No, I'm just asking if, uh, if you knew anything about him. He might have, I don't know. They're dying to see if he was in California. You ever talked about any of his friends? No, that was something you couldn't get him to talk about. Because the old group had broken up, basically everybody had gone in separate ways. You know, three or four years had passed since he went to the army. People had gotten married, you know, the group was going on. So, like I said, every now and then you get a phone call from him, and you say, well, you know, what's new with you? You know, you, you're going out with somebody, you're doing something, he never really gave an answer. In fact, even in Co-op City, he used to disappear for a few days at a time. He'd ask him, you know, well, where, where have you been? And he, he wouldn't tell you. What brought you and this other group of fellows together at, at Christopher Columbus? Well, I had met uh, Ed Snedeker at Christopher Columbus, and he knew Dave, and he introduced me to Dave. So I lived across the street from Co-op City where Dave and Ed lived, mm -hmm. and I started going over to Co-op City, and that's how I met Dave. Where's Snedeker now? Uh, he's, he used to be a Baltimore City cop, now he's on a railroad police down mm -hmm. in Baltimore, Baltimore. In, in D.C., actually. Now, did you know David when he worked in some sort of a fire response unit at Co-op yeah, City? Yeah, Co-op City, yeah. Do you know any of the guys who were in that unit with him? Sure. It was John Camparetto. It was all these guys I just mentioned. Now, John Camparetto, where would you find him now? He's working for the Rockland County District Attorney Narcotics Task Force. Mm -hmm. He's an investigator up there. Who else is in that group? Uh, Ed Snedeker, who I just told you about. I was in it. Uh, Jeff Hartenberg was in it, and him I don't know about. I haven't seen him in quite a few years. And some, quite a few other people had come and gone, who I really didn't know very well. Did Dave ever go to your house? Oh, yeah, many times. Did you ever eat dinner there? Oh, many times. Anybody in the family that he would have been close enough to, to talk to? My mother was very close to my mother. My mother was very shocked the day she found out he was arrested. You have brothers, sisters? I have a sister. Did, did you ever talk with her? On maybe occasion. confide in her? On occasion, maybe. Never. Not surprising that he would be close with his mother. Remember, he loved his mother, his adoptive mother, Pearl, and she passed. And at this point, I'm not sure how late in the game it was if he had already met Betty, but he had mommy issues. So it doesn't, it makes a lot of sense that he would feel close to a good friend's mom. I mention any friends though, other than your No, friend. other than I group, never mention any friends. Did he have any dogs? Dave, no, but he liked dogs. I have a couple dogs. He always, you know, very well, did very well with my dog. In fact, he was at my house one time, and he disappeared, and I found him outside playing my dog. What kind of dogs? I had a shepherd. Sorry, I keep jumping back and forth, but you know, there's so much information in my head and that I'm referring to. Now, if you look at some of those psychiatric letters, you'll see that he told Dr. Abramson that he loved animals. He loved animals more than humans and that he didn't have a problem with dogs, he only had a problem with bad dogs, so... Hmm. 
Did you ever meet a stepsister, Diane? I might have met her once. I really don't remember her, uh, other than Dave talking about her. What would you say about her? I wasn't too thrilled with her in the beginning. Why not? Uh, I don't know, maybe he was gentle that his father got married again, but not, not get, well, his stepfather, or his adopted father got married again. I don't know, he didn't like the mother, and the daughter was a, uh, supposedly living in a commune, she was an artist or something, and supposedly everything the daughter did was great, and everything Dave did wasn't worthwhile. And it, well, also, she was very hostile, and the daughter very hostile, that they went to the army. Boy, let's call him a murderer, it's going to go to Vietnam, and what they're doing there is atrocious, and that you're going to do it too, and he resented that quite a bit. What was the community that I have no idea. In which state? I think it was in California, I'm not sure. You ever visited it? I don't know. I don't, no, I don't think he ever went to California. I think she, he had met her when she came to New York. Do you know his brother? Do you know his half-brother? No. Diane's... Uh, no. I didn't even know she had a brother. Did David ever talk uh, much about the service or what he did? Uh... Yeah. I mean, he never went overboard on it. You know. Like I said, when he first went to the Army, he was thrilled about it. That's all he talked about like, when he came out leave. He talked about the Army. After Korea, he didn't discuss it too much. When he came home, I'm not sure if he came home on a furlough or whatever it was, or if he had to go back to Korea. He talked a little about it. He talked about the problems they had, the fights that were going on, uh, how the equipment was crummy, how they could freeze, so on and so forth. But he never really went into total detail about it. You ever like I say, he's a very quiet guy, even to his close friends. You ever talk about his sex life? Not much. Not much. He was, you know. You ever talk about the girls he had in Korea? Or yeah, he used like to that? have what he called a mama son. He used to, you know, he paid so much and she used to keep the house wherever he was living at the time. That was about it. You ever mentioned any names of the people he was friendly with in Korea? If he did, I don't remember. How about once he came back? Did he ever talk about any of the girls he was dating or was he dating people when he came after back? After he came back, no. Like I said, after that point, we really weren't, you know, we didn't see each other that often. Did you know his girlfriend, Iris? Schwartz? Uh, no. Uh, Gerhardt? Gerhardt, right. Right. Did right. you know her? Yeah, I know her. She's the one who sold the letters. She what? She sold the letters right after he was arrested for the paper. Oh, I don't know about it. Yeah, through the post. Uh, she's living out in the Midwest somewhere, I think Chicago or something now. Uh, she's married? Yeah, she's married now. Do you still have the letters that David? Uh... I have a couple of them. Did you sell any? No, I did not. Did you, did you ever mention if it was in any occult activity or uh, <laughs> no. demonism or anything like that? No, like I said, he went totally pure Christian for a while. So the idea of him going to the cult, you know, it's just sort of like a contradiction to what he was into at the time. He used to hand out little leaflets, you know, little passages from the Bible in it. I mean, he really he tried to convert everybody, and I'm a Catholic, and he tried to convert me, you know, which I thought was kind of ridiculous. But that, that turned a lot of people off, because he was constantly trying to convert you, talking religion all the time when he came out. Was Iris his only girlfriend? No, nah, he had a couple of others, you know. Remember any names? Only a first name. I remember Ellen. She was a blonde. And that's all I remember. What, up for a while. what kind of girls did he like? Long hair, short hair, dark, light. Well, Ellen had long blonde hair and Iris had short black hair. I guess he ran both ends. Right, you tell me, you know. Do you know a name, Alice? Who? A girl named Alice. Alice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't sound good. How about a last name, Perry? Say it again. Perry. No. Did you know any of the cars? John Carr, no. Michael Carr, Sam no. Carr. Did you ever talk about them? No. Before, okay, so you spoke to him once at least. At least once. When he moved into the 35 Pine Street apartment. The only ones I really remember. Did you ever mention any problems he may have been having with dogs howling or anything like that? No, I think I would have remembered that because, like I said, he liked dogs. He had a thing for dogs. He liked them. That's why, like, after all the news came out about the dog and everything like that, you know, I was sort of in shock, you know. When, you, when, you, when he was arrested, yeah. and you said, my God, David Berkowitz, I've known him for 10 years. Yeah, that was a strange night. Did you ever, anything that you read in the paper, did it ever ring a bell? Did you ever say, gee, you know, now that I think of it, 
David did those kind of things. David said those kind of things. David acted in that way. No. No. Pure shock. Everybody knew it was in pure shock. I got a phone call at 1 o'clock that morning, the morning that he was arrested. And uh, it was my friend who was a, works for a district attorney up in Rockland County. He says, they arrested son of Sam. I said, I heard that. And that's all I had heard before I went to bed. I said, no. Could you woke me up and tell me this? He said, it's David Bergowitz. I said, nah, it can't be. It's a thousand David Bergowitz. It's going to be the same one. So little by little came over the radio, you know, little bits of information they had pulled here and there. I mean, everybody was in shock. Total. Why yeah. would you say the last time you saw David Berkowitz? In person, at your house or socially? I couldn't pin it to a time. He was over my house, I believe, was the last time I saw him when he came over one night. What year was your place, though? He was arrested August 10th, 1977. So what time, how much before that did you see him? I really couldn't pin it down to time. 70, was it in 77? I, you would I, it'd be a pure guess. I really was it during these killings? I thought about that, and, and it might have been. I think it was, but I couldn't swear to it that it was. I don't know. Like I said, towards the end, the past week after he came out of the, you know, Korea, he came out of the army, it was so, you know, sporadic that you'd seen the guy. You'd see him for a day here, a day there. You'd get a phone call from him. I'd call him, something like that. The last time you saw David, give us a description of him. As best you can recall, you were a trained officer almost. Almost. Uh, no, he said he wanted to get on, on the job. I'd say, for the fact that he gained a little weight, look like, you know, the day he was arrested, looked like that. Except that he was a little heavier the day he was arrested. All right. What heavier. would you say his height was? He's fairly tall, 6'11". Six, six oh, excuse me, 5'11". All right, what do you think he weighed? Probably about 190, 195. What color was his hair? Black. Black? Black girl. Did he have a high forehead? Yeah. Was he lefty or righty? I believe he was righty. Did he ever wear any jewelry or rings on his hands? No. Did you ever, ever notice if he had a bad temper in uh, your high school days or afterwards? After no, he did. He, he blew his cork at something, but he was pretty level. You know, he didn't. I've never seen him in a fist fight. He never got that mad around me. Mm -hmm. Never seen him in a fight or really in rage. What would you describe his temper as being? Uh, light temper, or medium temper, or hot temper? Medium temper, yeah. yeah. More shade for light. Yeah. Well, what, what was some of the things that really irked him? What things, you know, above him? Well, like I yeah. said, uh, what really irked him, he was very, he was, he was very pro-right, you know. He was very conservative. What irked him is like a flag burning. Uh, was it racial? No, not really. What do you think about what did he think about girls who screwed around? They're all right with him. <laughs> Alright, that's what I want to know. Yeah, they were alright with him. What was his desire when he was a kid? Fireman. That was fireman. 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 That's okay. it. He wanted to be a fireman or worse. Okay, he used to hang out in the firehouse, correct? There was a fire station down there that he he was into a fu what what was that called, Mike? <laughs> yeah, where yeah. well, he used to go he took courses in first aid and by co op city. Well, the fire, uh, the fire service for Corp City. He was like a volunteer fireman. Yeah, yeah. Correct? Yeah. You were letting us with him in that, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. That was very now, off the wall. That was a very, you know, nonchalant sort of a deal. See, was that, was, that was set up by fire patrol. Officer. Right, but I understand he was very knowledgeable. He? Oh, yeah, he knew, he knew his stuff. Uh, Ed Snedeker's father was a fireman. Right. He died in a, you know, more than I know. <laughs> well, I know. Got and, uh... <laughs> Ed sort of basically got started now. I assume Dave always wanted to be a fireman. That's what drew those two together. And, and in his army days, he never tell you anything related to fires while he no. was in service. No. Not like I said, after service, that's when he wasn't desired to be a fireman. No, so this is now I'm going in service. He never mentioned no. anything to you, any incidents of fire. No. Nothing at all. Think. Fire? No. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute, oh, wait, a minute. wait a minute. There was an incident where they were going to court-martial him because he tried to burn the camp down. <laughs> yeah, there was something like that, right, that they were going to court-martial him or something. That was a very screwy thing because you never really got the full details from him. And parts of the letter, he'll, he'll start to tell you about it and then he'd stop. But he was being court-martialed for burning the camp down. So this was information that I had heard from one of the interviews or something I'd read 
and I didn't include it in the military video because I couldn't find receipts for it. So at least here's something, here's an account of it. Evidently the DA uh, Lifer knew something about it and Lenny seemed to know something about it too. I just always found it weird that it actually happened because who was David Berkowitz in the service that he would just get away with setting a camp on fire? I guess it must have been a lot smaller of an incident than we think. You know, I heard, oh, he blew up the camp. You know, I don't think it was that big because he was nobody in terms of rank in the military that he would just get away with something like that. So it could have been a smaller incident that they kind of swept under the rug, maybe part of the reason why he did get the general discharge but when he left Korea he was still uh, in the States for a while so I don't know that always uh, I never knew that to be fact but at least it's being brought up here so I am going to take myself off screen just for a moment let this play I gotta reheat my coffee and I will be right back but I'm in chat with you remember this is a premiere so keep chatting away with one another in Korea this is in Korea now, as far as I know, he wasn't court martialed. I know he got out a little early. I thought he told me he got out with a not honorable uh, general discharge. Did he ever talk about being busted in Korea? Told me he had to try to burn a camp down. And, you know, prior to his court martial, I would assume he was messing something out of MPs or something. Can you tell you what kind of drugs he was taking in Korea? No. He was a Bronx boy. Did he, uh, did you ever go with him to Brooklyn or Queens or any other areas? No. You know whether he ever did go into Brooklyn or Queens? Did he ever talk about driving no, here and there? Bron well, like I said, he didn't drive at that point. You know, what he did after the Army, like I said, we didn't know him, but prior to the Army, he didn't drive. And he stayed basically in the Bronx. Did you know that uh, uh, David drove a cab for a while? Yeah, he drove a Cork City cab over in Boston Post Road, I think they were. That didn't last long. Did he ever talk about uh, any of his fares or any of the things he did? No, like I said, he's a super quiet guy. What do you think of the composites? They didn't look at all like him. Because I remember sitting with my girlfriend looking through the paper. And I'm saying to myself, I even told her this. I said, gee, I said, you know, somebody's got to notice jerk. Somebody's got to notice cycle running around. And I said, you know, if everybody took a look at it, It'd be the end of it. And I remember, I looked at it, my, my girlfriend looked at it, she knew David to some degree, you know, from me. And it didn't look at all like him. Not at all. He didn't look familiar me the sketch? No. Didn't remind you of anyone at all? No. You say he had black hair. Was it the color of George's hair? Or dark? Mm, if anything, it was a little lighter. But it wasn't straight like any of people think? No, it was kinky hair, yeah. It was very kinky hair. Like mine on the sides? Yeah. A little more kick yet. Right? Kick you in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Very curly hair. Yeah. Has he written to you since he's been in prison? No, I haven't heard from him since. Getting back to his sister, was he very friendly with her? Did he get along good with her? His yeah, stepsister. Stepsister. Uh, I'd say he hated her guts in the beginning. She was, she was an artist. I remember one time she, the like I said, there was bitterness because the mother used to raise anything that did, the daughter did was, you know, wonderful, lovely. And she had a painting in the living room, and David turned it upside down, and the mother didn't even notice the difference. You know, I mean, that was one of his favorite stories. But towards the end, I, I don't know if they reconciled or, or he started to get along with her, but he started talking more favorably of her towards the end. But in the beginning, he didn't like her at all. But you didn't know her well at all? No. How no, would he right. communicate with her? Like I said, the only time we really know is like when she would come for a visit. If he called her afterwards or, or they started to, to write back and forth to each other, I don't know. Do you know if he ever went to visit her? As far as I know, he didn't. you remember how he found her? How he found her? Yeah. I assume she found him after his mother you know, married his father. That was that, sir. How about the sister that he's got? His, his, uh, his other sister here in Queens. Okay, you mean his real sister? Yeah. His real Falco's now. Right. Okay. Uh, there was a while, he was very into trying to find his real parents. Uh, he was talking to a group, I believe it was in Staten Island, who helped adopt the children, find their real parents, whatever it was. And he was talking to them. 
And uh, he says he found where they were, that he was sitting outside the house, he was watching them go back and forth. And the last I had heard at the time that he did not communicate with them, that he had found them, but he didn't talk to them. He never talked about her to you? No. Did you ever hear of a group called the Circle of Friends? No. Uh, was, uh, who was his closest friend? Who, if it wasn't, uh, who would you say was his closest friend? Longest friend and closest, I would say, was Ed Snow. He was the longest. He was very tight with him for a while. Though they had bitter feelings towards the end. Why? Uh, basically because Ed went to the Coast Guard, they went to the Army, and uh, basically Ed never bothered to get in touch with Dave. They tried to write him and try to get together, and just basically Ed never did. I never, you know, reciprocated. Well, David was into religion when he came back, right? Where did he worship? Did he go to church? Conversation? No, I, he was baptized in Carolina or Louisiana or something like that. He said he was baptized. I said he went to church, I remember him talking about When he was in the States? Back in the rough, uh, he would never go to any congregation in North? Not that I know of, no. Did you ever mention North Dakota to you? No. Do you think he, do, do you know if he was ever out in North Dakota? No. I don't know if he traveled. Sorry for me on. When, after he got out of the army, we know he went to Texas, to Houston. Uh, did he ever mention anything about going to Houston, visiting? No, not to me. Was he a good driver? I never drove with him. If like, we went anywhere, I usually drove. Uh, no, I remember he had an accident once. That's all I really know about driving right there. An accident for leaving my house. I believe it was on Christmas Eve, and I don't remember the year. He was leaving, he was going on to the uh, New England Thruway, and he got into a smack up. Whose car was he driving in? His. Yeah. It was his? Yeah, the Ford. Was the car badly banged up, do you know? I'm not a fender bender, it wasn't too serious. Do you have any idea where he bought his car, that Ford? Did he ever mention where he bought the Ford? Probably did, but I don't remember. How, what kind of relationship did he have with his father? Uh, I believe they got along fairly well. You know, Dave was a sort of funny guy, how he was exactly with his father. I know he used to work at his father's store all the time. So I assume they were, you know, somewhat tight. What kind of store did his father have? It's probably a hardware store, somewhere in the Bronx. How about his uncle Lou? Did you ever meet him? No. Lou Schwimmer? No. I didn't know his family, besides his father. Did he go along with his stepmother? Like I said before, no. Did he ever mention what the problem was? Yeah. Uh, everything the daughter did was wonderful. Everything he did was, you know, was wrong. Did you ever hear of him mention the name like, Trackman? No. Steve Trackman? No. Or Carlin? Steve Carlin? No. And he never mentioned the Carr family? Never. First I heard of them was on the news. They don't mention the kind of guns he had? As far as I know, he never owned a gun. So it seems like he was living two lives. I've seen that, oh yeah. The guy who they arrested back. Even now, like when we discussed it, there's two days. There's the Berkowitz that everybody knows, and there's the Berkowitz that's friends with. And we'll discuss David, and uh, like I separated two of them, and I assume most of, most of people know him, seem to say the same thing. The Dave we knew, and it's the Dave that the people know, you know, after he was arrested. And they're like two different people. When you went out with Dave, did, did you drink? I assume you went to the bar, yeah. the bar here and there. Yeah. What, did he, what kind of stuff did he drink? Hard stuff, beer? Some guys are beer drinkers, some guys are scotch drinkers, bourbon. No, I don't remember what he drank. Well, when you used to sit around, did you order a pitch of beer or? Uh, most of the sitting around was done at my house, you know, like when the guys got together, and that would be, that was it. What would you talk about? Just, uh, Anything. Did you like sports? No, it wasn't a sports man. Never really went into sports. What was he into? <sighs> After the fire department, not much. Most of this was done before I went to the army. After he was into, like I said, after, after the army, when he went into the army, that's when, you know, it was wild before, you know, we seen him, and everybody sort of went to different ways. When he came back from the army, did he show any homosexual tendencies? No. 
they talk about any odd sex? Not me. What kind of relationship did Then he's like, not to me. The probing. He sounds, I don't know, what do you guys think? Drop it in chat. He sounds pretty sincere to me. Anyway, let's keep going. We still have about 20 minutes on this, maybe a little more. Did he have with his mama son in Korea? Did he ever talk about her? I assumed it was good. I never heard anything bad about it. Did he correspond with her, do you know, after That's he got married? No, he did not. And the only time you'd gone out with him on a date was you tried to fix him up and... Uh, that one time, yeah. Didn't pan out. That was after he was out of service, right? Yeah, that was afterwards. Was there a big change in, in the way he was after he was in his own? Yeah, the vast improvement. You'd say it was improved. I would say so, yeah. In fact, in fact, the last time I saw him... See, Dave's a funny guy. You talk to him, and he sort of started staring out a window, and that, that was it. You know, he just, you know, he had to snap his fingers a couple of times, he had his attention back. The last time I saw him, he was almost a pleasure to talk to. Him. It was always a, a, a job to talk to Dave, to keep his attention. He used to laugh about something, he asked him why he's laughing, I'd never tell you. Well, what'd you talk about when, you know, when you say he was a big change? What did your conversations consist of? Basically, about? consisted of working. Uh, at the time, I believe he was working for a construction company. Uh, it might have been on cars. Uh, you know, I think a couple guys would talk about. You know. Did he know how to fix cars? No, he wasn't too mechanically inclined. When you talked about cars, what did he talk about? If he was having a problem with his car, because I'm a car guy, so I assume mm -hmm. that you know, we were talked about a little bit. But he uh, didn't know how to fix the car. No, he wasn't very good with tools. He had a problem. There was some problem he had, which was a relatively minor job on a car, and I did it for him. So he wasn't really too mechanical. You know, what was that? I don't know. I was going back for the ones. Did you ever ride in his Ford? No. Like I said, we ever went anywhere, I usually did the drive. Now, you said that he had a minor problem with his car. Was that the Ford? Yeah. That's the only car I know that he owned, the Ford. Did you ever, like, you must have looked into the car if, uh, if you did some work on it. Yeah. Anything unusual in the car? No. Did you ever notice that he kept a pillow or blankets in the car? If he did, I never noticed it. Do you recall whether you ever looked into the trunk? Whether he opened the trunk when you were working on it? No, the only time I saw his trunk open was the day I moved him. And I moved every stick of furniture he had, me and a couple other guys. Anything in the trunk unusual? No. Tools? No. Blankets? Well, a blanket's so probably from when we were moving the furniture. He had rented a, a, a van, and I drove a van for him. He had a lot of stuff. Well, I had two or three loads on the van. Did he have a, uh, a wooden chest or a footlocker? Possibly, no, no. Might have had a footlocker. Like I said, you know, he moved quite a bit of, you know. What kind of furniture did he have when you moved it? Basically, he left all the stuff from his folks' house, because his folks were moving to Florida, so he took a lot of the furniture. That's why he moved out, because his folks were moving. Did he ever mention to you that he wanted to get a job at a dog shelter? No. Not at all. That surprised you? No, it's just, you know, something I don't think Dave would have wanted to have done. What kind of furniture do you recall you moved? See, there was a lot of stereo equipment he bought while he was in the Army. There was a bed. Uh, a lot of boxes. You say it was a bed. Was it a, a box spring and mattress? Or I'm, was trying, it I'm trying a to frame? think what the bed was. And so you're going way back. I don't know. I moved quite a few people. I moved all my friends. You know, and I'm trying to remember what that bed he had going that far back. I can't remember. Why would you even thought of him getting a, a part for a job in a dog shelter? It's just a, you know, something so I would like dogs. He liked, yeah, well, he liked dogs. He wasn't fanatic about it. No, so exactly. Exactly. Actually, you know, for him to work from a construction company, for him to want to work, because he didn't want to be a fireman, then he went into the army, yeah. oh. uh, he went for a construction company. From that to go to a dog shelter, you know, just wouldn't make sense for anybody. Well, he didn't work steady. He must have had some sort of uh, unemployment in between jobs. And, uh, if he did, like I said, I don't know, like, it was very sporadic. What, what did he like about the construction company? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't know, I, I just had the opinion he wasn't happy working there. He didn't yeah. like working there. What got me is I delivered there. I delivered to another outfit that was working there. And uh, 
that's why I was surprised to find out that he was working there. So well, okay, next time I'll look for you, you know, because I knew who the trail is for in the construction outfit. And then I found out he put it. Did he complain about the cold weather or the, that he was a golfer on the job? Or? It might have been that he was a golfer, he wasn't really doing anything in particular. Because he was an apprentice. You know, that might have been why he was upset with it or he wasn't too thrilled with it. But, and I remember telling him, let's take it out. You know, you're not going to be apprentice for the rest of your life. Right? You know, it's a fairly decent job he had. Did he ever talk about his security job? I forgot all about it, you just mentioned it. Uh, yeah, he was working in business. What was he working? And, uh, he worked with a dog. He worked with an attack dog, I believe. But look at him, I know if I'm saying it right or not. You know, <laughs> I remember, you know, he's no, right. he worked for IBI. I don't remember the name of the company. I remember he worked, in fact, I had forgotten all about that until you had mentioned it. Yeah, he worked with the docks, I believe, or something like that. I don't remember exactly where. Did you like that job? I don't remember liking him that. Did he ever talk about any of the people who worked with him? Anyone who worked on a construction job with him? No, like I said, he never really talked about anybody. When he was on a construction job, he was living in Yonkers. Was he? I don't talk about anybody on the job. Was he the kind of guy that used to go to a bar to have a drink once in a while? How about discos? Did he like dancing? I hated discos. What were you saying about discos? I just didn't like him. Did you have any reasons for that? No, I just didn't like him. You know, it wasn't his style. He wasn't much of a dancer. Hated discos, but now we're hearing around the tubes that he was uh, scuffing up the dance floor at the peach tree. So I'll be interested to hear more about that. Um, before I go back onto the tape, I recognize that throughout this, and I don't know, maybe you'll pick up on something, I hope so. I didn't have any major breakthroughs on it. I just really appreciate bringing it to video so that we could be in chat together. So I realize that a lot of you have families and work and all that stuff. So you may not have the opportunity to dive into some of this information like some of us researchers do. So I hope that you're enjoying this. Um, keep in mind, and oh, it's so strange. This is one of the people that was closest, a friend to David. And it's like, I mean, I know men don't always share as much as like women do. We're always like, ah, you know, tell every obnoxious detail. But it, he's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember looking in his trunk. I don't remember if he liked that job. Oh, I forgot about that job. You know, he's gone on with his life and... I mean, I don't think he's holding anything back. I think it's true that David was introverted and, you know, he he was a swell guy when they hung out, but probably didn't contribute much to the energy in the group. But anyway, let's continue. I don't like to dance. Did he ever talk about the job at the post office? Now, I'm trying to remember if I even talked to him when I was in a post office. Um, that was right after the, uh, the construction job, I believe, or soon afterwards. And I don't really remember him discussing it much, if he discussed it at all. Did he ever bring along a friend, someone that he knew from the job? Never. Never. Like I said, he never talked about anybody. You'd ask him, what is he doing himself? Have you seen anybody? Nah, you know, what are you doing? Like, like I said, even when he took off, He'd say he, he went back to the old neighborhood, like when I call it city in our younger days. Uh, he went back to the old neighborhood. Oh, you know, who'd you see over there? He'd never give you a name, you know? He was very quiet. He wouldn't tell you anything. Or he'd say I was walking. You know, the guy was gone four days. You know, he'd be walking four days, you know? He really walked. And so he'd never, he'd never elaborate where he was or what he was doing. Well, when you say he, he would disappear for three, four days, what period of time are we talking about? During the summer or week. No, I mean, is this after you got out of the summer? Oh, no, no, no. This is, this is Co-op City. This is, you know, uh, before the high school days. He just disappeared for three, four days? Yeah, he'd take a walk somewhere. You know. Where are you? He took a walk, you know. And he didn't drive in those days? No. No license. Well, here's something quick to think about. He would disappear from a few days and be non-existent to his friends. Could those have been periods of time where... 
you know, David was really in his head. I mean, listen, the, con the consistency of these stories is, is amazing. I mean, I have no reason to believe why his friends from Co-op City are not being truthful. Um, he was so quiet, he never said anything, he never gave any detail. But then you look, you look at his writings and everything that was his, in his head, and it was extreme detail. So you're looking at this crazy kind of Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing going on. So was it that times where he couldn't pull his head together, he would just disappear? He would avoid the friends so that they didn't see possible manic behavior or strange behavior. And then when he pulled it together, he got back with his friends. I'm just something to think about. Okay, let's keep going. We have about 20 minutes left. It wouldn't tell you where he went. Was he working at all at that time? Uh, uh, with his father. Down in the hardware store. And he just disappeared? His father ever come in and say, you know where David is? No, he never came looking for us. Uh, we called David, he just, he wasn't home. He's not home right now, he went out. I assume he came home at night. It's just during the day, he took off. But when you say he was gone for three, four days, in other words, you mean you didn't see him around for three, four days? Right. In other words, nobody in the group had seen him, you know, where we used to hang out, he wouldn't come around. And he never said what he did? He never said. He either walked or he went to the old neighborhood. And that was as far as he would go on it. He wouldn't tell you anymore. He went back to the old neighborhood. What was he looking for? Memories of Co-op City? And before, he kind of made it like this was during the Co-op City time. But this had to be afterward, after David, you know, Nat was already in Florida with Julia, and David was on his own. Leonard's referring back that, oh, I went back to the old neighborhood. Why was David lurking around the old neighborhood? Was he looking for something? What were you searching for? He never expressed any type of desire for guns, though, right? No. I mean, that was, yeah, it was a slight interest for a while. Uh, prior to he went into the Army, he had a... In fact, the only gun I ever knew he owned was like a BB gun or a dot gun. That's the only gun I ever knew he owned. Where were you shooting? In his room. He set up a target in the closet. <laughs> I remember he set up an oil bottle. We were sitting up in his room one day. He set up a little one of the oil bottles for, I guess, for a BB gun. You blew a hole in that, in the whole closet. When you went, you used to go up to his apartment and you were in his room, what kind of stuff did he have in the room? Very, I won't call it empty, it was just a very plain room. Just, you know, painted walls, not, not much on decoration. It was like a, a little fold out bed sort of a deal, like more like a cot that, that that's, could be like used for a couch. You know, like one of those type mm -hmm. of beds, small bed. It was very plain. Have any pictures of the walls? Um, maybe, uh, like I said, very right wing. You might have an American player, though. If you, had you know, some guys have BB guns and they, and they shoot oil bottles. Some guys shoot pictures of something they don't like. No. Anything like that? No. Like that's the only recollection of his BB guns at the time he did that. When he was in the IBI, did he ever, uh, did you speak to him much uh, when he was involved in the security? Or I don't remember him really talking about the time he was with his dog. He had a, a, an attack dog of some sort. And got a cat or something at the time. I'm not going to tell him. Try to pull the dog off the door from the ambassador. The cat. That's what I remember. Did he ever talk to him? Did he ever tell you he was armed at that time? No, as far as I know, he wasn't. From the time he got out of the service until the time he was arrested, how many times did you think you saw him? Maybe five, ten times. And how many of those occasions were at your house? I'd say most of them. Most of them. He had to have the dropping by unannounced. Yeah, yeah. It's very annoying. Someone, you know, in the middle of going out, about to walk out the door and ding dong, you know, oh, hi, David, how are you? All right, David would drop in and you would have a date. Would you go out on your date and leave him home with your mother? No, what I usually do is I've done, I did that once, which my mother never forgave me for. And she would start talking to me. Uh, usually I'd call up, you know, Linda and tell her, you know, Dave dropped by, you know, she knew Dave. And, you know, 
don't see him that often, you know, I'll be over the way. Then I'll, you know, say, well, damn, I gotta go now. I'll spend an hour with him or something. Then I'll go. And when you spend the time with him, what do you talk about? You know, just odds and ends, just chit chat. Nothing really, you know. Like I said, it was hard to have a conversation with him except for that last time. Um, it was very difficult to keep something going with him. Like I said, he used to, his mind used to wander off in the middle of a conversation. Now, the he used to get up and walk out, you know, in the middle of the he'd get up and walk out. Oh, leave it now, what? No, 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 no. You remember that last time. What's so uh, memorable about the last time? Uh, like I said, he didn't get up, he didn't walk out, and uh, his attention was kept the entire time we were talking. But how long did you speak to him that time? Uh, maybe an hour and a half. What did you talk about? Like I said, odds and ends, nothing really meaningful. Was it about Korea? Was it about his job? Was like I said, he didn't talk much. Most of the conversation was done in my pocket. The idea was he kept with me. You know, I could stop in the middle of a conversation and he knew where I stopped, you know. His mind wouldn't want to. He'd be able to talk to me, he'd be staring off, and then he'd go, huh? Which is quite often. He'd always hit with that, huh? Was he saying something? Why? He didn't do that last time. Why? So it sounded like he had a little touch of ADD. Um, but the time closest to the crimes, uh, Leonard's describing him as being more attentive and clearer. Was something shifting in his mind, just something to think about? Sounds like most of the time he just talked about nothing, um, didn't pay a lot of attention, wasn't really engaged, just kind of there. And now listen, this last conversation, he's saying that, that he was present, that even though Lenny was doing most of the talking, that at least he felt he had David Berkowitz's attention. So, all right, let's keep going. Why was your mother so upset the time that you left him alone with him? Well, just in the fact that she was still keeping him company, you know. How long did he stay? She I was. don't know. Have the police ever spoken to your mother? Oh, yes. In fact, the day he was arrested, John Comparetto had called, I don't remember, the precinct or the squad or whatever it was, and uh, had said, look, you know, we know what happens anything, you know, we can give you this. And they said, well, yeah, okay, fine, you know, give me a phone number, so on and so forth. Uh, he gave him my phone number. And we had hung around waiting for them to call, and I didn't have a call. And at that point, it was like a madhouse, because they had used me for a reference. And a lot of reporters found out my name and my address. So at that point, I called New York City Police Department. It was a precinct in Queens. I don't remember what precinct it was. And I said, look, you know, you want such, such a friend call, and they said, you're going to get back to me. And the guy on the phone said, don't worry about it. He says, you know, it's over. You know, we arrested the guy. You know, there's nothing else we want to know. I said, okay, thank you. I hung up. Uh, a little later, after the post had started with the uh, accomplice, that they had started that he had a friend or something, then Inspector Dow got in touch with me and I talked to him. Did he come to the house? Yes. This was recent? No, no, this was after he was arrested. Back in 77. Yeah. Yeah. When did they go to see your mother? Who goes to my the mother? The police. They didn't. Did the police ever speak to your mother? No. She kept out of it. He just said they did talk to his mother. Let's keep going. Oh, and it also sounded like he was re he was questioned by uh, or interviewed by Dowd shortly after the arrest, so it wasn't just the two years later. But he just said that his mother did speak with the police, and now he's saying, no, she kept out of it, so let's listen. So as far as you know, to this point, nobody's ever spoken to your mother about this case. That's right. Papers, anybody? No way. Not much my mother could tell him. You never spoke to your sister either. Who? Oh. Your sister? What about it? They never spoke to her either. <laughs> Nobody. Uh, the reporters might have once. Who? Uh, the reporters. Oh. Is there anything your mother mentioned to you about the conversation that, that she had with him that, you know, sort no. of set her off? She, she, was, she liked David quite a bit. Of all my friends at the time, I'd say she was closest to David, you know. She was a typical mother, you know, and David was sort of like a lost puppy, you know. He had, had that sort of an attitude towards him. She talked to him. And, uh, Did he ever confide in her? Talk to her like he was a mother? Basically, no, but he used to call my mother mom. But all my friends did at that point. He used to come over and eat all the time. That, that sort of a deal. She was fairly close to him. She was, she was very upset that day she found out he was arrested. In fact, she was on vacation, and I had, that morning, I called where she was and talked to my father more or less, you know, to break it to her gently. Rather than turn on the TV and see his picture plastered everywhere. That upset her a bit. Where are you working now? Rockland? Yeah, and Patson's in Mount Vernon. In, in what? Mount Vernon.
Like I said, talk to New York. You know, at this point at the time, I talked it out. Stuff like that. Okay. It's basically the same conversation we're having now. Did he ever make any comments to you about any of the girls he dated? No. Not really. If, the, if he did say something that was out of the ordinary, and I'm saying, you know, I mean, out of the very ordinary, he never said anything to me or I don't remember it. But I said, there was nothing besides what I told you as far as, you know, his sexual relationship with people. It was really out of the ordinary. Was he a neat guy, a clean guy? Yeah, he was fairly neat. How about his clothes? Were they clean? Yeah. How about him personally? Yeah. Or he had short cut hair. He's had a clean appearance though. When you say short cut hair, uh, the last time you saw him, how would you describe his hair? Same as always. He always had short hair. He never really went to long hair. Uh, I remember when he went into the army, he wished he had long hair. He wanted long hair. That's why I guess because they shaved him bald. I don't know. He wanted long hair in the worst way at that point. Basically, he always had basically short hair. Did he wear glasses? No. What's, what didn't he like about the girl that you fixed him up with? He never said. I don't know. I think it was more the other way around. They just didn't talk. They sat in a bar, and that was it. There was no conversation between them. She didn't talk to him. He didn't talk to her. Just, was, was he anxious about getting fixed up or no it was very like I said it was a very casual sort of a deal I invited him over you know I said look you know me when you're going to be the boss I said why don't you come by say hello and her friend happened to be there at the time so we thought maybe you know you know, get together or something but it just never worked out they didn't even talk he talked to me and she talked to my, my girlfriend and that was about the extent of that what did your girlfriend think of David like I say he really didn't talk he was a very shy guy she didn't know him all that well you know about enough to say hello to, and what maybe I had told her, you know. You know, she didn't dis dislike him. Did she ever say that he seemed unusual to her, or anything about him that was unusual? Well, he was unusual to begin with. I mean, he had his own little idiosyncrasies, which I told her about. He's very quiet, you know. Or you talk to him, you can't always keep his attention. But, you know, I warned her about that. Did he read a lot? Not that I know of. When you used to go to his room, did you ever see any books around that you used to read? No. How about magazines? Not that I remember. Was he into bodybuilding? For a while he was into it. He had weights. He had weights. He was into that for a little while. He was strong. I mean, basically the press, you know, always says, you know, fat boy, uh, you know, very chubby sort of a guy. A lot of strength behind him. I would, I would never have, you know, really called him fat. Uh, after he was arrested, you see, well, he had a belly on him, you know, which wasn't like him to have that. He, he had some muscle behind him. He was a strong guy. When you say he had weights in the room, did he ever see him lift them or? Uh, the in past, I never seen him really vigorous. I never seen him vigorously go at it. No, just, you know, sometimes a guy will have a set of weights in the room. He'll pick them up and he'll press them. He'll show you what he can lift. And say, look at this, I like got 185 pounds or 200 pounds. Ever seen anything like that? If he did that, I don't remember. It. Don't worry about it. Do you know whether he did his bodybuilding only at home or did he ever go anywhere? As far as I know, he did it at home. Did they ever belong to a gym that you know of? No. At least not prior to the Army, maybe after the Army. And did you ever talk about a health club after the Army? No. Did he like to play ball? Guys play baseball, big guys play uh, basketball? We played a little, you know, softball, you know, about the extent of it. Was he any good? Fair, he was alright. No interest? Not great interest. I know I have no interest in it. Maybe he had a little more interest than I did. But, uh, How about basketball? No, I don't show him basketball. No. Is there any one place that sticks out in your mind that he frequented after he came out of service? Yeah. After service? No. After service, like I said. Uh -huh. No, I guess he wasn't into boss. He never really went Well, any one place that he went that you might recall? No. Besides, you know, come and see him? No. Any place? No. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I didn't see him that often. Mm -hmm. well, it's hard to get him to talk. How about army friends? Did he, did he make a lot of friends in the army? I don't ever remember him discussing any of them. Not, not, great, not great. In, uh, a friend in particular? No. Not like other people I know have been in the service, you know? They make friends for life, you know, and they talk about them all right. the time. You know, right. Joe Schmo, Joe Schmo, we always hear about... They've never really gone into that.
Did you ever mention Billy Van Parker? No. He liked to go to the movies. There's only one... No, not really. I, we went to the movies. <coughs> Went to see The Exorcist with him. That's about the only movie I know. And what was his about the only movie. movie. What was his feelings on that movie? He didn't think much of it. You know, I remember it did a job on me. I mean, I was, you know, it was a good movie to me. It was very suspenseful. I, you know, it really did a job, you know. It gave me a lot to think about. But it was, you know, just like water off a duck's back. Well, he'd say, that's ah, a bunch of crap, or... Uh... Basically, you know, eh, well, you know, Hollywood, that sort of deal. It really didn't make much of an impression on him. He didn't say that's not like it really is. No, no, he didn't give me any first-hand experiences, if that's what you mean. <laughs> but there's no kind of place that he'd say, hey, uh, how about meeting me here tonight? No. Not even church? No, not even church. If I get me to go, but I'd be on my own. Did, did he have any friends in church that he spoke about? No. You, you mentioned that he, he must have got this literature from somewhere, but who right. gave it to him? I have no idea. You don't even know the name of the church he belonged to? No, I don't even know if he belonged to a church. I had all this literature. It was some sort of Baptist church. I remember him talking about, like I said, down south, where he got baptized and threw him into a lake or something. When he was a kid and he was Jewish, yeah. was he religious? No. Did he ever go to temple? You remember he used to go to Hebrew school or anything like that? He was no. bar mitzvah. Did you go to his bar mitzvah? No, I didn't know him that long. Bar mitzvah long before I met him. Like I said, I met him in 69. He was in high school at that point. What, what year did you graduate? I graduated in 72. He went to 70, he graduated in 71. We only shared, in fact, in all the time we were only in one class together. What kind of grades did you get in school? I said, weren't great, but you know, it wasn't an, an F student. Did he, have to go, average. did he ever have to go to summer school or make up courses or anything? I don't think so. His only ambition was to get out, finish school, go into the army. That's what he wanted to do. Did he ever bitch about his teachers? No more than any other student. Did he go to any clubs when he was in high school? No. None. Was he an artist? Did he like to draw? No. And he was drawing and he didn't care for it because of his half-sister? Well, he didn't care for her as an artist. You know, I know that you know, was his entire view on art. He didn't care for her as an artist. So. Did he have a choose very, you know, modern art? I think he was more of a Norman Rockwell type guy. Did they even talk about her friends? <clears throat> no. Is there anything that sticks out in your mind that was David? Of any, you know, of all the guys you knew and all the guys who hung around, was the one thing that was David? Every, every guy, you had a group of fellows, a half a dozen guys that hung around together that yeah. did things together. Um, each guy has one thing that's his thing. Some guy's in a makeout man. Yeah. Some guy likes to read books all the time. Some guy's just, he'll sit in the movies for them. Some yeah. guys are rowdy and some guys are drinkers. Yeah. I mean, what, what would you know David is for? None of them. He was the quiet one. He was the one. He was the quiet, the quiet, was shy. Very super All right, quiet. let me ask you a question. You said the night that, that you found out that they locked up uh, uh, Dave and his baby or something like that. Yeah. You said you were surprised. Shocked. More words. What was your, when you were shocked? Explain. Go well, ahead. put it to this way. Uh, think of it, I mean, really, seriously, think of it yourself, somebody you know for quite a few years. Somebody, you know, was a nice guy, very quiet. And suppose you found out he was son of Sam. They locked him up. How would you feel? The yeah. same sort of a thing. Did you think he did it by himself? Depends on what day you would have asked me. Uh, depending upon what I had heard. Right, I mean, as far as the whole entire, are you looking back? I find it hard to believe that Dave would do it. That, that was always my opinion. I couldn't see Dave doing it. Evidently, he did. He must have. He confessed to it. And else. But I always found it hard to believe that, you know, the guy I know could do something like that. I mean, that was always, you know. Was he a heartless type guy? No, not at all. He, uh... Was he any uh, violent? In any not that violent. Well, Never no. showed his violence. Right? No. Was Was he a follower or a leader? More of a follower. W was he the kind of guy that you could easily manipulate? Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't call him easily manipulate. Could you get him psyched up to the point that he would follow and, 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 and you know to your command, that sort of thing? 
It was never really a situation where, you know, where anybody who I knew would try to do that with her like that. It was basically Trying to get out of the cult involvement. Is he a follower? Uh, could he be easy, easily manipulated? They just want the cult word. It's a small group. In other words, if I said, hey, if we went to a bar together, <laughs> yeah. and three or four of us in a bar together, yeah. and a couple of guys started to hassle me, right? Yeah. Would David back me up? Yeah. Being it, home no, no, he'd, he'd, he'd back you up. Okay. Yeah. And he wouldn't mind uh, you know, throwing a few fists around. If he had to, but it was not something that he would, you know, initiate. You ever remember him being involved in anything like that? I ne like I said, never saw him throw a punch. It was a time, though, where it was somewhat close, where uh, it was him and another guy. Basically, they were in Cobb City. There was five or six of us, and, you know, the girls were in a group at the time. We were staying there, maybe 20 or so. The Eagles came over and accused all the guys. It was like four of us, you know, at the point that they accused. And I was one of them at the time. She was mugging one of their, you know, uh, little brothers or something like that, you know. And this little kid comes, hey, yeah, that's them, that's them, they stole my money, stole all my money. So, okay, fine, words of talking. John Camparello at the time, he's a very good talker, he starts talking, you know. He's going a mile a minute, you know, trying to come. Right and, uh, the story had changed around a little bit. They got to the point that it was only John and Dave who did the mugging, and they forgot about the other two of us. And I know Dave was going wild. Uh, at the point a patrol car passed by, my friend flagged him down, and the patrol car said, okay, you guys, you know, go home to us. And basically, you know, Dave and, and John said, we didn't do anything. Well, you know, why are you kicking us out? And they said, well, we don't want no trouble, just go home. And that infuriated him. But I know he was getting to the point where he was waiting for the first swing to be thrown. In fact, at, at that point, we all were. We all just, you know, we figured this was going to be it. It was like 20 to 4, 20 to 5. That was the only time I really saw him to the point where he was really ready to swing. You knew him well before service and after? I knew him well before the service. All right. Now, would you say there was a big change in him? You did say there was a big change yeah, in him. Yeah, there was a big change in him. Well, he was in the best, service. No, in the service, and went downhill. In the service, he got into the drugs. No, but then when he came out. But when he came service. out of the service, as, as compared to the service to when he got out, it was great. It was a vast improvement. Improvement over what I expected. You wouldn't classify him as freaked out. No, not after the service, no. We expected some sort of monster to come back. You know, everybody knew him expected heaven knows what was going to come, you know, knocking on the door one day. He's knocking on the door, it was almost the same day, you know. Very quiet, no problem. In fact, I thought he was well on his way to improving. Did he ever mention while he was in the service that he ever uh, killed anybody or shot at anybody or anything like that? No. As far as I know, he wasn't in any sort of combat. Action at all? No. Did he wear any of his army stuff when he got out? Fatigue jacket, that would be better. Have his name on it? Yeah, I think so. How about army boots? Did he wear army boots? Right after service, maybe. I don't really couldn't swear to whether he did or not. Did you ever see him wear any other army clothes? Like an army overcoat or anything like that? No, just, just, just jacket, green jacket. Now, you had mentioned you were at the 5-2 precinct and you did it. Right. Now, if you think back, did you know O'Shaughnessy at all? I knew the name. I didn't know him at all. I knew the name. You know what David knew? I don't think so. So I think he was in the Army at that point. You ever hear anything unusual about O'Shaughnessy? <sighs> There's something about him. I don't remember. Is he a Yonkers cop? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I heard some things about him. I had met him a couple of times. Uh, basically, just two to five two. There's no social between my. No, I wouldn't call myself a friend. Uh, <clears throat> I probably wouldn't know him now if I tripped over him. But uh, yeah, I heard some things. Yeah, he was. Uh, somebody had told me a story in Philadelphia. I don't remember who told me a story. It was a Yankees cop. I know he took his his, his weapon away for a reason. I'm not sure. Uh, he supposed he had an imaginary gun battle. He walked into the precinct. Yeah, yeah, you know, some sort of gun battle he had. And everybody look at him. You know, fine. They took him. They took. His weapon away, they put him on the guest on some sort of limited duty. And the last I had heard that they had reinstated him. That was the last thing I had heard. And he, I remember he drove a bet. He got in trouble because uh, he was supposed to be sick one day. And he was out, he racked up the bet. And they found out about him. He got in trouble for that. And those are the only two things I know about the guy. Did, they, did David ever talk about his exhibit? Yeah. About what? The time when he was in exhibit. No, not much. You know, it didn't last long. He was in the auxiliary army. It was a very short 
It's Dave. Did you ever visit David when he was on Bond, when he lived on Barnes Avenue? That's where. The Bronx. Just the day I moved him. Now, when you moved him, you moved him to from Barnes Avenue. Moved from Cobb City to Barnes Avenue. To Barnes Avenue. Right. What kind of an apartment did he have there? Uh. All right. Well, it looks like the tape cut off there. I don't know that there was a whole lot more material there. You can hear the obvious. They're trying to see earlier in the interview, had he ever spoken about the cars? Did you know Patrick O'Shaughnessy? Uh, was he easily manipulated? And I think overall, as I expressed earlier, I think Leonard was being honest. Maybe he uh, did stay in communication with David a little longer than he let off um, because he said, well, maybe after the service five, five or 10 times, well, 10 is double five and maybe 10, maybe it was 15. Either way, I'm not saying that he was involved in anything at all, just being David's friend. And the account of their friendship sounds very similar to other accounts that we've heard. So I believe he was being genuine. Um, there were no big breakthroughs for me here, other than I do li love to listen to questioning things like interrogations and questionings, because you can hear them asking the same questions over and over in a different way, waiting a little bit, talking about something else, then coming back and answering, uh, asking rather, and, and you know, kind of checking out to see if the answers do match. And, and for the most part, I think they did. So I hope that you enjoyed this premiere with me. I hope that we had some good dialogue in chat. Again, no big breakthroughs for me, but I do recognize that some people don't have the time to sit, listen to all the interviews, but you will find time to jump on a channel, listen, and have nice dialogue with um, other researchers, enthusiasts, uh, viewers, subs. So I hope that you enjoyed. We've got a lot of good stuff coming out in the next few weeks, and I really appreciate you watching, and I appreciate your support. Have a wonderful day.